In the last couple of weeks, we've revealed to you the great Bible truth that submission is that one little word that will fix all of our problems, but unfortunately, submission is what human beings fight against more than anything else. Unfortunately, there's the human desire in many to be top dog, number one, above, better, to look down on people or to have people bowing to you or to not be a servant, to not be subservient, to not condescend. And so, because of that, we wallow in problems. May I suggest to you this morning, as I have a couple of times already, that it is the lack of submission that has caused most problems in the world. People will not obey the gospel because they have not submitted to God. People won't attend or pray or give because they have not submitted to God. Marriages fail because they have not submitted to each other. Churches split and fight and bicker because they have not submitted to each other or to God. Folks, just about every one of our human problems can be boiled down to submission or the lack of it. I hope that you put me out of a job and that everyone will be perfect in submission because then we'll have no problems and I'll have no reason to preach. We can just meet on Sunday, take the communion, do the other acts of worship, and eat food together because we'd all be like Jesus, wouldn't we? Be perfect. Open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse number 21. Ephesians 5, 21. The Bible says here in Ephesians 5.21, submitting yourselves one to another. I want everybody to see that. Let, that. let that get into your heart. Submitting yourselves one to another. Someone says, I want to be a preacher because I want to be the top dog. That's wrong. Someone says, I want to be an elder because I want to be in charge. That's wrong. Someone says, this is my house. I'm the king of this house. I'm the, I'm the king, the ruler. That's wrong. The Bible says, submitting yourselves one to another. Never forget it. That's everybody. Someone says, preacher, who is that? Does that include me? That's everybody. Everybody. Open your Bibles to Romans chapter 12, verse number 3, and let's look at the roadblock to submission. Why won't people submit? Why are people afraid of it? What's the real problem with the world today? When churches have trouble, what's the real problem? Romans chapter 12, verse number 3, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. It is the roadblock to submission, pride. Thinking more about yourself than you ought to. Thinking too highly about yourself. That's the roadblock to submission. It's a pride problem. And so long as we're too high up on the pole, I'm going to be a problem causer. I'm going to be a problem. Folks, we've all met those who walk with puffed out chests. So the key to submission, therefore, is lowliness of mind. Not climbing the pole, but sliding down it. That goes opposite to what we think, though, isn't it? Philippians chapter 2, verse number 3. I hope you write these down. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 3. The Bible says, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better 
than themselves. Everybody see that? The Bible says the key here to submission is lowliness of mind and esteeming the person next to you better than you. But someone declares, nobody's better than me. There's always somebody better. Plus, you ought not to be looking to be better. Be the best. I'm the best. I'm number one. It's lowliness of mind. That's submission. Counting others better than you. That's submission. When I think too highly of myself, when I think too lowly of you, I'm going to cause trouble. Folks, we've all met trouble causers. And more often than not, when you look with a magnifying glass, sometimes you don't even need that, you'll find a person who thinks too highly of themselves. Heads too big, won't fit through the door. When I de-emphasize myself and I emphasize you, I'll never split a church. I won't be a problem causer. Won't see the brethren split. You see, listen carefully. Submission splits nothing. Submission doesn't split anything. Marriages don't split when there's submission. Churches don't split when there's submission. Show me a fighting church and I'll show you somebody who's got a problem with submission. Somebody's standing too tall. Somebody thinks he has a rod of authority. Same with a marriage or a relationship. Folks, it all boils down to submission. Every member of the church is to submit to every other member. We don't get to pick and choose. Everyone submits to the entire congregation. Everybody say amen. amen. Who was the greatest man who was ever born? Not talking about Jesus. He was God and man. Who was the greatest man who was ever born? Well, the one who could better answer that question is Jesus. Jesus knows man. And he declared that the greatest man who was ever born was John the Baptist. That's what he said. Now John must have been a pretty good guy because Jesus said of men who have been born of women, not one has been greater than John the Baptist. That just makes me think. I want to know about this guy John. Jesus must have known him pretty well. And if Jesus says he's the greatest man who was ever born of woman, folks, we ought to get to know him. Amen. We don't know much about him, do we? We don't talk much about him. We've skipped right over the greatest man who was ever born. Let's learn a little about John the Baptist. He was charged with the Lord through a special birth to be the forerunner of the Messiah. Now, folks, to be the forerunner of the Messiah, you've got to be a humble person, a submissive person. Here's the problem. You're going to be amassing disciples unto yourself by preaching and teaching before the ministry of Jesus. Crowds of people are going to be following you. And you'll find out that he emptied entire cities into the wilderness to come hear him preach. John stood at times with, with crowds of people that couldn't be numbered, if you will. And while he preached, they listened with open ears and penitent hearts as he baptized and baptized and baptized those who were called disciples of John. Everybody see that? And when he walked, he turned and saw crowds of people following him. Who are you following? John. I'm a disciple of John. Baptized of John. Heard the gospel from John. And John was proud to have those followers. But he was the forerunner, not of John, but of Jesus. 
And it's going to take a submissive man to realize there's going to come a day when you're going to have to step aside and the Lord Jesus take your place. And John was waiting for that time. He was anticipating with joy that time. And he looked and he waited and he looked and one day he saw the Lord. The Lord came to him and said, baptize me. And John said, I'm not even worthy. Stoop down and unloosen your shoes. Not worth it. Jesus said, do it. And John declared, behold, the Son of God. And his disciples asked him, what should we do? And he said, follow him. Listen to what John said, what would be difficult for a lot of us to say. Listen to what John said. This is why John didn't split anything. John said, I must decrease that he may increase. Everybody see it? It's no wonder Jesus said he's the greatest man who's ever born. He didn't say, hey, just a second. These are my disciples. I've got an important position here. You're going to cast me aside to nothing. At least I could be number two. He didn't say that. He said, I must decrease. And folks, what he meant by that was, I must decrease to zero, to nothing. Every one of my disciples belongs with the Lord. I don't even want one. He didn't care about position. John died in a prison, having his head chopped off. And was proud to have become a martyr for the Lord Jesus Christ. What about my name? What about my position? What about mine, mine, and mine? John never asked. And folks, when we have a submissive heart like that, boy, that's hard, isn't it? When we have a submissive heart like that, we won't split anything. We won't have a problems that we have, that we develop for ourselves. That's lowliness of mind right there in front of you. Submission will help us evangelize the world, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse number 22. Here's what he said. 1 Corinthians 9, 22. To the weak I became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Paul is saying in evangelism, I've submitted to the prospect. Folks, there's no need to talk about servanthood until you talk about submission. But someone says, I'm not going to be anybody's servant. Folks, when you declare you're not going to be anybody's servant, you're saying you're going to be somebody's master. Why aren't you going to be anybody's servant? What about a servant of God? Well, someone said, well, that's different. I'm a servant of God, but I'm not going to be anybody else's servant. So what is a servant of God? A true servant of God is a man who's submitted his heart. Not only to God, but to man. Ephesians 5.21 A true servant of God is like John the Baptist, the greatest man who was ever born. Submissive. Not someone who declares, I'm not going to be anybody's servant. That's an embarrassing statement. Don't make it. If you feel it in your heart, change it. But don't make that statement. Because it is against Christianity and the Lord. As a Christian, we say, whose servant can I be? Amen? Don't fight against it. So when the preachers will submit to the members and the members will submit to the deacons and the deacons will submit to the elders and the elders will submit to the members, we won't have any church troubles. Someone says, preacher, tell us how we can get rid of all of our church troubles. Let's say it again. Preachers, submit to the members. Members, submit to the deacons. Deacons, submit to the elders. Elders, submit to the church. Someone said, I don't know about that. I don't know if I say amen to that. 
Some preacher says, well, I'll tell you something else. I'm the preacher here. People tap on things. I'm the preacher here. Ever see somebody do that? Or like this? I'm the preacher here. I had a friend who tapped on people one time. He would, would tap on his wife. Let me tell you something. And his wife grabbed his finger one day and bent it back. His last name was Steele, Brother Steele. He called that his steel finger. He said he didn't use his steel finger anymore. He was tapping on things. I'm the preacher here. Let me tell you something. When somebody starts tapping, there's a problem, don't you think? Let me tell you something. I'm the preacher here, and I'll say what I want to say. That's a bad attitude, and you have no, no business preaching with that attitude. Until I submit to the membership, I have no business standing up here preaching. The elders and the deacons and all of those with other assignments must respect the congregation they lead. Because we lead and we don't drive. We're out front leading, not behind with a big pole beating on people. We lead, we don't drive. And submission decides which one. A teacher ought to submit to his class. Listen to what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, 15. Open your Bibles there. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 15. It's a practical expression of submission. He says in 2 Corinthians 12, 15. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Everybody see that? This is Paul. Here's a practical expression of submission. If you want to be an elder, there's your verse. You want to be a deacon, there's your verse. You want to be a preacher, teacher, there's your verse. Spend and be spent. And unless I'm willing to spend and willing to be spent, I shouldn't occupy the pulpit. Folks, the crux of the matter is that until you realize that I care about you and I'm living for you and I die for you, I have no business preaching. And when you learn and know that I care about you and I love you and I'll die for you, you'll listen. You'll follow elders. You'll follow deacons. It's submission first. That's why some of us aren't happy. I have preacher friends who go a place and they last a year. What happened? Got fired. Brethren got big problems there. Going to another church. Year later, gets fired. What happened? Them brethren, man, going to another place. Two years later, fired again. What happened? Man, I'm telling you, there's something wrong with the brethren everywhere. After a while, you start wondering. Five churches, one year each, and the brethren have trouble everywhere? Well, I'm standing and I'm telling them what to do and how to do it, but no one will listen. They just get mad at me. It's because they don't know you care. They don't know you love them. You haven't submitted to them. Anybody can stand and tap the pulpit and say, y'all are sinners and you need to repent or you're going to hell. There I did my job. Anybody can do that. But you have to submit first. And then you won't preach like that anyway. Someone asked me once, am I going to hell? I said, yes. Then I grew up. And then someone asked me, are you going to hell? I said, I have no idea. I don't know. How do I know where you're going? But I'll tell you this. If you want to go to heaven, you need to obey the gospel. Jesus loves you and he died for you. So that's different. So you're saying I'm going to hell? Yes. That's different, isn't it? Doesn't matter who it is, all of us submit to someone. This is, this is for the spirits who say, I'm not going to submit to anybody. Ain't going to happen. Everybody submits to someone. 
In 1 Corinthians 11, Paul gave a nice little list. He said the head of every woman, every woman is man. And the head of man is Christ. And the head of Christ is God. Everybody see that? That's fascinating to me. Fascinating. It's fascinating not because it says the head of every woman is man. That's not why it's fascinating. Someone's, oh man. It's fascinating because it says the head of Christ is God. That's the fascinating part. Wait just a second. Where'd that come from? Because Jesus is God. But in his part of the Godhood, the Godhead, he said, I submit to the Father. And folks, if Jesus can be in submission, why can't I? God's saying, you've got a place, human being, man, woman, human being, you've got a place. And if you'll just be in your place, things will work out fine. Someone says, what's my place? Submit. That's your place. Well, you're talking to the wrong guy. Enjoy your troubles. Anybody else? You got a place. Submit. People fight against it. Some people are addicted to trouble. They've been in trouble for so long, they don't know how to be out of trouble. That's why I drink coffee. It's disgusting. I drank coffee this morning. I'm drinking. I'm thinking, man, that's so good. And then I thought, that's so bad. Coffee, nothing in it. It's disgusting if you really think about it. But I can't go without it because I've had it for so long. I crave it. Pour out that old bitter brown juice and drink it down. It's like, mm. And if I go without it, I don't know how to live. And that's how some people are with their troubles. They've been in so many troubles for so long, they don't know how to live without them. Too used to it. So you cling on to, you're not submitting to no one, and enjoy it. That's all I can say. Jesus practiced submission. Here's what Jesus said. I am come to do your will, O God. What does that mean? It means he practiced submission. Preachers and elders and deacons and parents and whoever you are in authority, the first word in authority, the first word in leadership is not authority. It's submission. Don't forget it. Someone says, I can't wait. I, I got to be in charge. I just can't wait. I got in charge one time. They made me a business card. Boss brought him in, laid him down, and said, David Dominesi, general manager. I thought, oh, yeah, man, this is cool. Saved one of the cards aside. I'm looking at it. General, I didn't think I'd ever. Look at that. That's just pretty. And I came to work every day as the man in charge. Wore my tie in there. Secretaries. In charge. Pretty soon the troubles mounted. One day I got 93 phone messages. One month I was on the phone for 7,000 minutes. The bill came in and I laid it out on the floor to show the boss. 7,000 minutes. And I started thinking to myself, I don't want to be in charge. I'm tired of being in charge. Just give me a hose, tell me where the bugs are, and I'll just spray. I'm serious. So many people want to be in charge. Authority. But the first word in authority is not authority. It's submission. Don't ever forget it. Before Jesus commanded me to submit, he practiced it. Every man is under somebody else. Even Jesus was not exempt. You want one little word that will solve all your problems? Submit. This morning, let me encourage you to submit your life to God. Your way is a bad way. Every man living, doing that which is right in his own eyes, always leads to trouble. 
Might go good for a while, crashes in the end. Mounts more problems on top of you. Submit your heart to God. If I have a Bible study with someone and they walk away from me, I don't ever follow them. Jesus never did. Because I can't make someone submit to God. But when someone came to the Lord and said, Lord, please tell me, he taught them. Because Jesus knew a hard heart is impenetrable. But when a man softens his heart, the word can grow. And so Jesus, preachers, friends, can't do your part. Submit your heart to God and say, I'm ready. Lord, use me. Send me somebody to tell me your will from your word. And when you submit your heart to God and the word is revealed to you, you obey it because you have a submissive heart. I used to think the baptistry was the problem. People don't want to be baptized. Maybe it's because they don't want to get wet. I never could understand it because I'd stand and look at the baptistry and think, why won't people get in here? It seems so simple. Because it is simple. They ought to be lined around the building twice. Instead, they're lined around the building twice to go watch a movie. Pay money. Why won't they go into the baptistry? It's not because you're getting wet or because, oh, they'll be embarrassed. It's because they haven't submitted their hearts to God. That's all it is. Because once a man submits his heart and says, Lord, I'm ready, you just tell me. And someone shows you, there's no arguing. That's what it said. Let's go do it. That's a man who's given over. Let me encourage you this morning to give over your heart to God. Believe in Jesus, repent of your sins, confess him to be the son of God, and be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. Begin your life with the Lord. He'll put you into the church. Your sins will be forgiven. That's the beginning. You've got to end your life in the church, faithful to Jesus, and heaven will be your home. Now, that's just good news. God loves me. He wants me to have as easy way as he can give me. God loves me. Wants me to go to heaven. Now, that's just nice. That's a good God. And he put me into the church that he purchased with his blood. God loves the church and here we are all together and I love you and you love me. What a great group of people. God's people. So let's help each other go to heaven and let's encourage those who haven't to submit their hearts to God. If you're subject, you come and sit down on this front pew as we stand and sing our song of invitation.